holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God and highly exalt God forever. God has blessed us and brought us to this time. God has caused His holy name to dwell in our midst. God has shown us His glory in His mighty word. God has shown us the way of truth and life. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God and highly exalt God forever. For 20 years, God has upheld us. For 20 years, God has shown us His grace. For 20 years, we have been nurtured in word and sacrament. For 20 years, God has empowered us with the Holy Spirit. For 20 years, God has made us witnesses in our community. For 20 years, God has placed us in loving fellowship with one another. Praise God for 20 years. Praise God for 20 more. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. There is one body 
and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love. We must grow up in every way into Him who is the head to Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. survives. 
the builder will receive a reward. If the work is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. The builder will be saved, but only through fire. Do you not know that you are God's temple, and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will be destroyed. destroy that person. For God's temple is holy, and you are the temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools, so that you may become wise. So let no one boast about human leaders, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the word of life is death, or the present or the future all belong to you. You belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you. 
I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood arose, the river burst against that house but could not shake it because it had been well built. And the one who hears and does not act is like the man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell, and great was the ruin of that house. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. It didn't matter what church someone was from. 
It didn't really matter if they were part of any church at all. If they were in need, we thought we could help. And sometimes, as a result of that work, someone would be touched by the Spirit, receive Christ, and become part of our parish. But not always. And that was okay, because as a minimum, we knew that we had planted a seed. And our highest priority was to serve the community by sharing and living the good news of Jesus Christ. At the inaugural Mass of this parish, I stated these words. <clears throat> Today we are celebrating the inaugural Mass for St. Jerome Parish. Much preparation and prayer and support have gone into the start of this parish. Much prayer, preparation, and support will be needed in the future. We will not be the same parish a year from now. Our celebrations and our needs will be different. But may we always be a parish that humbles ourselves before God in prayer. Well, here we are, 20 years later. A lot of people in Tulsa thought we'd be dead in the water after a year. But we're tough old birds. <laughs> and we believe that we have a call and a mission. And it has been a journey. I can tell you story after story, both funny and heartbreaking, but it has definitely been a journey, one which is not for the faint of heart. A history professor once said, <clears throat> excuse me, history can give us a glimpse into what was and what was meant to be. It can fill us with perspective, and if we are lucky, meaning. It teaches us that we don't have to ignore the past, but rather embrace it and let it guide our present with simple truth that part of who we are is who we were. If we use it, we can find perspective on who we are as a people, where we are going, and why. Great words. And in this morning's first reading, the author of Ephesians talks of a church's calling in the world. And they invite us to see a church that takes part in a greater mission of God. Just as the love of Christ surpasses our understanding, so does the impact of God's work through the church surpass even our own expectations. And in our gospel reading, Jesus is implying with another parable that we must practice what we preach on our mission or it will not stand the test of time. Many years ago when we were looking for a building, for you see we moved uptown from the tin building to Nine's funeral home. And some of you will remember at times I threatened to bring some of the patrons of minds from their slumber rooms into the chapel <laughs> to create a little excitement and thought they may say amen to a sermon every once in a while. <laughs> but I digress. We had a theme at that point, for those of you who will remember. Do we have a mission for a church or need a church for our mission? Do we have a mission for a church or do we need a church for our mission? I think that our first reading is trying to speak to us about that. The author talks about how individuals within the church can all work for the overall calling of the church without the competitive spirit of the Roman Empire. The author envisions a church engaged in the transformation of culture to God's way of mutuality, acceptance, and love in which each person's gifts are accepted and embraced as a part to strengthen the whole body. You see, domination cultures pit one person against another. But God seeks to restore us to a deep partnership with God and each other where we know and understand what our part is and as a portion of the whole. This means that it is okay that someone else prays more deeply preaches a different sermon, offers a divergent perspective, and brings other gifts to the community. Each of us 
has an important gift to offer God's work in the church. And these gifts complement each other. Some people have official roles in the church, and some do not. But all are part of the body. But the point of the passage, and indeed the entire letter, is to help the church in Ephesus recognize their part as a whole in God's way of mutuality, acceptance, and love. And let's just remember that God works through us together, not as just a bunch of individuals. God seeks the reconciliation of all people to each other and all cultures to each other. God works through us for the healing and the creation of the whole world. It is a very powerful message. And I believe that God gave an expression of that work right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, over 20 years ago. And two years ago, a small group of people came together to form an independent Anglo-Catholic community, and they named that community St. Drums. And they left the traditional Main Street churches, not out of hate or embarrassment, but because of a sense of self-worth and calling. A calling and a belief that the gospel of forgiveness, reconciliation, justice, and peace was just not a collection of pious words committed to memory, but a spirit to which we commit our lives. And in a belief that the seven sacraments should and would be available to all people. To create a spiritual home in which our families could worship and grow in a very safe environment where we could hug and tell each other that we loved each other. To create a parish that would foster a sense of self-esteem which comes from recognizing your sacred work as a child of God. Amen. So here we are, approximately 2,000 Holy Eucharists later. For 20 years, this parish has offered the sacrament of marriage for all people. Numerous baptisms, confirmations, reconciliations, holy unctions, and ordinations to holy orders without the significance of your sexual orientation, and hundreds and hundreds upon hundreds of people fed through our food pantry. And St. Jerome's has stood tall and proud when others have questioned our validity, our need, and our purpose. St. Jerome's has even been called odd at times. <laughs> Non-conformist. Bishop Bettendorf, a previous bishop one time, preached a sermon and said we were a honky goose <laughs> telling of a new way and leading others to safety and peace. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> and hopefully that is so. This is a great parish and we have been blessed beyond our wildest dreams. Yes, this church thing is a very mystical thing. As we try to do it in our humanness, this union is really about what we have with one another. I believe you are not here by mistake and that there is a promise for your presence. And it is grounded in what God has in mind for us and our acceptance of that mind. It is about letting go of ourselves and our worries and our agenda and let, letting God set that agenda. It is about letting God inhabit our thoughts and our actions and letting God shine through our words and deeds. Each week as this tower bell rings, it calls us to worship. And this church stands as a sign of hope, healing, and love. So let us continue on that mission as a parish. And may our witness shine forth as a welcoming beacon to those who so need that light in their lives. And let us do so until time is no more, until that glorious day that God calls us home or returns to receive us. And as I said 20 years ago, we will not be the same parish a year from now. Our celebration and needs will be different, but may we always be a parish that humbles ourselves before God.
we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified and conscious by us. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So that we might pray to God, giving thanks for all the blessings richly bestowed upon us. Let us kneel as we are able. O oh Lord our God, for the vision of those who planned for this congregation and for the commitment and dedication of all who served together at the time of inception. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have served this parish so faithfully as bishops, pastors, deacons, members of the vestry, and staff, and for those who serve it today. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have willingly given of their efforts to teach, encourage, counsel, and sponsor. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have dedicated their skills their voices, and their time to support the worship of you in this place. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have been a part of our parish, but now serve you in the church triumphant in heaven. We give you thanks, O God, for the ways in which we have been able to care, support, and give strength to one another on the journey of life. We give you thanks, O God, for baptisms and marriages we've celebrated, for professions of faith we have heard, and for answers to prayer that we have experienced. We give you thanks, O God, for our commitment to remain true to your word in a world of confusing and conflicting voices. We give you thanks, O God, for generosity that has enabled us to reach far beyond this community with the word and witness of your gospel. We give you thanks, O God, for your presence which continues to comfort and heal those who are ill and afflicted or grieving, among us especially <coughs> Mark Burroughs, Robert Stopper, Terry Eastland, Carly Sanchez, and Don and Michael Caldwell, and especially for Joseph's family for the passing of his father, Robert Ortega. We give you thanks, thanks O God. God. Remembering our most glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Jerome, our patron, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. Blessed Lord, draw our hearts to you, guide our minds, fill our imaginations, convert our hearts to you, guide our minds, fill our imaginations, control our wills, and make us holy yours. Use us as you will to the glory of your holy name and the welfare of your people. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. We confess our sins and the sins of our society in the misuse of God's creation. God, our Father, we are sorry for times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. We enjoy the fruits of our hearts, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. We belong to a people who are cruel and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. We are godless, and we do not care for the world that may. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there were no consequences. Our actions and this is 
give you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Exchange with one another's side.
by your Holy Spirit, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with St. Rome, St. Paul and his benefactors, all your saints, past and present and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever.